This is part two of creating a fireball projectile inside of Unreal Engine 4. Uh, what we're going to be doing now is creating the fire texture that will be put on a ribbon particle inside of Cascade. And so let's go ahead and hop into it. So the first thing we want to do is go to our file. We want to go new and I'm going to create a custom texture that's uh, 1024 in width by 256 high and we'll go ahead and do that and then i'm going to do control backspace to fill in my uh, layer with black and then from here i'm just going to use my default uh, gradient brush and then no change setting except uh, shape dynamics and transfer and that's all we need from here and of course we have smoothing on and so there's no minimums on any of this and now we're just going to go ahead and make sure that our color here is white. It is. And from here, now I'm just going to make sure that I stay within these invisible lines right here, roughly. Uh, and so that's so that whenever we offset the texture, we can tile it more easily. And so uh, what we're going to do is just uh, start creating some nice little strokes, something like this. And I'm just trying to get my defined shape. I think that there's a nice shape. And so I'm just going to kind of go through and we're going to create some nice little squiggles. And it's okay if we have uh, some spots like this that aren't covered in. And so one thing I do want to know is like I'm, I'm really going over this area right here a lot. And we don't want to try and go over the same area uh, a lot of times if we can help it. And so I'm just kind of coming through and really adding some detail to this right here and maybe we can come through here and kind of clean this right here up I'm kind of going over my imaginary line that's okay because I haven't created a hard edge like that and so this right here should be fine and then uh, maybe we want to come through here a little bit and kind of get these lines like that and so I think that right there is fine so now I'm going to go to filter and then other and then offset and we're going to just offset it enough so that um, we can see these two edges right here. And then I'm just going to fill it in like so. And that right there. So let's see. Maybe we'll come over here and kind of create another arc like so. And so I think that right there is fine enough. And so now I'm going to go to filter, other, minimum. And... Uh, I'm going to create something kind of like that. So maybe uh, 7.3 is good enough for me. And I'm preserving roundness, of course. And then I'm going to go to Control L. I'm going to bring this down so that my values are from 0 to 255. Now we're just going to see how it fades out. And I think that that right there is uh, some pretty good motion for us. And so uh, we've got that. And... Now I'm just going to hit OK. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to uh, highlight everything. I'm going to do Control C to copy it. I'm going to add a new layer. I'm going to paste that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, come over here. We're going to do a gradient map. And let me go in here and uh, hide my alpha channel. And we're going to come to this gradient map. And I'm just going to select uh, this color right here, this is the same gradient that we used in part one. And from here, uh, that right there is all we need to do. So let's go ahead and uh, turn our alpha channel back on. We'll turn our gradient map mask on just in case we need that. And so uh, from here, I'm going to go to File, Save As, and we're going to save this as a TGA. And so we'll call this uh, FXT Fire Trail 01. A. And we'll save that as a target. We'll save it as 32 bits and I will see you in Unreal. So now that we're inside of Unreal, we're going to go ahead and import our texture. And so I'm going to import my fire trail just like so. I'm going to make sure that our alpha imported, which it did. And so last time we had an issue where, or I had an issue where alpha wasn't importing. Um, and so from here, now I'm going to go to my fire material that we created. So our FXM Fireball 01. I'm going to right click it and we're going to duplicate that. I'm just going to call this FXM Fire Trail 01. 
And this is going to be for our ribbon particles, uh, as I said, while we were creating the texture. We can go ahead and just take everything here uh, before our main texture sample. And we're just going to press delete and we're going to delete it. Let's bring up a new texture coordinate here. And we are going to set uh, our texture coordinate index to one. Uh, typically texture coordinate index can be used to say, you know, uh, what channel you're using for your UVs. Apparently the UVs for particle ribbons, they use uh, this coordinate index one. And so you just need to make sure that you have that uh, on there. And we're gonna go ahead and change our coordinate index to one on these uh, detail uh, things over here. I don't know what you'd call this extra detail. And so we're gonna make sure that those coordinate indexes are set to one as well. And we're gonna go over here and we're gonna make sure that we have our fire trail 01 set. And one of the things is I just want to note that we don't want to have distortion going through here uh, just because uh, I tested it in the past and it looked funky. And so uh, we're going to leave everything else the same as it is. That's all we need to do for this uh, particular texture. It looks weird in this viewport right here, but I promise you it's fine. Uh, it's just the way that they render um, the coordinate index of one. And so now that we've got our material, uh, we're going to hop on over to our particle system. And the first thing we're gonna do before we create the ribbon is I want to change a couple things with this. Uh, I did some testing beforehand and I found that a lifetime of uh, about 0.3 and 0.4 helped mount a whole lot better. And then we're gonna change our size by life. So the second point in, uh, we're gonna change this to 2.5. And so it's gonna get bigger and then it's gonna go down to 2.0. And so from here, we can go ahead and create a new emitter and we're going to do our type data and we're going to say ribbon data. And then I'm going to delete my cover color over life. I'm going to hold control and drag this over. I'm going to click my dynamic parameter and bring that over since we have the same exact settings as this old material. The only thing I'm going to change over here is I'm going to change our HDR intensity to five in this case. And that's just because we want this trail to be brighter. And so uh, also, our, I can't remember, but I changed the spawn rate to 50 here. I can't remember if it was the same in the previous tutorial. But um, from here, uh, we're going to go ahead and do FXM, and we're going to find our fire trail. And now that we've got that, we can go ahead and uh, go into our actual ribbon data. And these settings that I'm about to use are ones that I have picked up uh, off of the real-time VFX Discord from a guy named Shin. At least I think it's a guy. And so Shin, uh, he or she posted um, that there are some well-to-do, uh, what would you call it, ribbon settings that work for all ribbons. And I'd highly recommend that you follow this because any problem that I've ever ran, to, ran into with ribbons by using their uh, actual settings, uh, it has fixed all of my problems. And so without further ado, here we go. Our max particles in trail count is going to be 75 and then we're going to uncheck this clip source segment box and we're going to check the rest of these boxes so we have just dead trails on deactivate activated uh, dead trails on source loss uh, enable previous tangent recalculation tangent recalculation every frame spawn initial particle uh, our render axis stays the same tangent spawning scalar stays the same uh, just render geometry is the same we're going to change our tiling distance to maybe 250 and then we're going to change our uh, distance tessellation step size to one. And then we don't need to do anything else. And these right here are the settings that you probably want to use in most cases for your ribbons. And then what I'm going to do is inside of our initial velocity, I'm going to go ahead and change this to 45 in each axis. And I'm going to do negative, oh, negative 45. And let's see, negative 45, negative 45, like so. And so we have that. And let's go ahead and single this out just to see how it looks. It's looking pretty good. Uh, we're going to go into our size by life. And then I'm going to change the size by life to maybe five, or actually let's do eight. And then we're going to go into our initial size. We're going to do 15 by 15, 10 by 10. And then we're going to make sure that we lock our axis in uh, X, Y over here. And so now we have that. And one thing we can do if we want to preview our motion is we can go to view and motion. We're going to change our motion radius to about 500. 
And we're going to see how that trail looks. And that right there is looking pretty dandy, if you ask me. And so uh, now we can go ahead and restart it and show the actual fireballs that we have over here. And so we can uh, see that we're going to have a fireball that is going in an arc, kind of like around something. And so we've got that, and that's looking pretty nice. And so now what we can do is let's go ahead and preview uh, our actual fire trail. And now we can see that we have something that looks like this. And the cool thing is now if we move around our little target over here, we can see that the trails are going to curve and it's going to give us some really nice uh, wispy motion as we shoot our fireballs out towards a moving character or whatever it's going to be. So this right here is looking pretty great. And I think that I am quite satisfied with that. I will say that uh, I'm probably going to move this target over to here or something like that. And so for now, uh, we've got this. And this right here is looking pretty good. And uh, I'd say that what we need to do now is we need to make uh, three more things. So we're going to work on sparks. We're going to work on the smoke that is following behind this actual uh, projectile. Then we're going to work on the main orb or whatever, the centerpiece, the forefront of the actual particle. And that right there is going to help us uh, clean up where the actual front edge for this fireball is. And one thing I do want to do before we progress is I'm going to change our spawn rate to maybe one per second. And that right there is just so that um, we can see it a little bit better. And so now we can see our trail coming through and we can see it dissolve quite nicely. Uh, one thing that I do want to uh, mention is that we kind of have a hard edge whenever it spawns. I personally do not know of a way uh, to prevent this rather than, say, making the uh, particle small. And then also, uh, if you look close enough, you can see that there is a hard edge on the spawn of the particle trail as well. And, you know, once again, I don't really know of a way to fix that specifically other than changing, say, like the color of life or something like that or doing a, uh, you know, dissolving it. Um, first and then undissolving it and then redissolving it or something like that. But uh, once we have uh, the rest of our particles in, you'll barely even be able to see any of this stuff. And these are just things that, you know, we deal with as FX artists. Uh, in general, hiding all of the smoke and mirrors that we do to perfect our craft. And so I'm going to go ahead and hop on over to, say, Photoshop. And then from there, uh, we'll start painting our next texture. And I do want to mention, which if you just saw that uh, before I do that, I'm off on my other screen right here, so Unreal is paused. But if we hit play, we can see that the ribbon gets very, very large at first. I do not know why that happens. <laughs> I don't know a fix for it, and I just know that it only happens whenever you press play. It might be because uh, we're in simulate mode, and so I can go over here, and now we can see that once again our first uh, actual fireball was quite large as well. So I don't know a way to fix that. If anyone knows, leave a comment below and uh, we'll see about spreading the knowledge to fix that. And so otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and hop into Photoshop. So now that we are in Photoshop, we're going to go ahead and create a 512 by 512 texture. I'm going to go ahead and get my uh, tablet ready again. And so now uh, we're going to make a 512 by 512 texture. Let's go ahead and fill this in with black by doing control backspace. And what we want to create is we want to create uh, a nice little orb that's kind of like fiery. Um, and then we're going to use that to create the front portion of our projectile. And so, you know, typically inside of your projectile, you have something like, you know, a big part at the beginning. You have some filler details, you have some other filler details. And something that kind of trails along for a while you got some little sparks and stuff and we're going to be creating this portion right here which is this big fat orb so we're going to go ahead and just fill that in and erase my beautiful art <laughs> and so uh, from here what we want to do is we just want to start kind of painting around uh, in a circle and so we're just going to come in here and we're going to paint around and as much of a perfect circle as we can it doesn't have to be completely perfect but um, we do want to get this in quite nicely, I think. And so we just want a nice little round circle over here. And so something like this is nice. And then, uh, you know, maybe we'll have um, some little tendrils that kind of pop out kind of like this. 
And so this right here will be, you know, some little wisps and such that we can work with, with like our, our smudge brush or something like that. So let's go ahead over to our filters. And of course, you know what we're going to do. We're going to do our filter gallery. And this time we're going to choose a brush type sparkle. And this is our paint daubs uh, filter as always, as my preferred go-to to, to uh, merge together brushes and our brush strokes. And so I'm going to make maybe about 19. Of course, for you, it's going to be different, but I think this right here looks uh, pretty good. And then I'm going to hop on over to other and minimum. And then we're going to get uh, some nice uh, fiery shapes in here. And let's see how far we can go. And so I don't want to preserve or lose too much of my actual texture here. And so we've got something like that. And so one thing I'm going to do is I want to come in here and I'm going to clean up some of this. And so maybe what we can do or to get more little holes so I can come in here and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab a darker color and I'm just going to start kind of poking holes in this texture right here because we want it to be a little bit more on the fiery wispy side. And to help us do that, we can just poke some holes in it. So I think that, that right there is good. So we're going to go to filter other minimum and now we have a lot more holes in this texture it looks more like cheese and so we've got something like that so i think that right there looks pretty good let's do like 4.3 and i think that's nice we still got some nice edges we got some nice little holes in here and that right there is looking pretty good i'm going to go ahead and uh press Control t actually let me select everything then i'll press Control t and i'm going to enlarge this a little bit and this is fine that we do this we're not uh scaling it up too much to where we're going to see a bunch of pixels and so from here we can go ahead and test uh, our levels and one thing that we do want to do is bring our levels down to normalize it from or actually i don't know if it's normalized but we want to remap it from 0 to 255 roughly and then we can check our dissolve over here which we aren't really going to use dissolve much for this uh, to my knowledge uh, but one thing that we will do is uh, which dissolve it's not going to be the biggest portion uh, of this actual texture, but we do want to make sure that we have some pretty good shapes just in case we want to use that And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to filter and liquefy And we're going to come in here and we're just going to kind of uh, Blur out some of these shapes like this bring out some nice um, Tendrils like this and we'll have something that goes like that and so something like that something nice and fiery maybe kind of get that hard edge right there out of there we're going to kind of push this right here around a little bit so that it's kind of like a uh, a nice little fireball so we've got something like that and we're kind of going out on the edges maybe want to bring these little tendrils in a little bit it's a little bright so we've got something like that and i think that right there is a nice little fireball we've got some we still got some of our holes preserved these holes right here have helped us bring in some uh nicer looking areas so i'm going to go ahead and hit okay and i was just using my mouse to drag that around i'm going to go ahead to my layers i'm going to do this i'm going to press Control c and then i'm going to add up oh, whoops not that go away okay i'm going to add an alpha layer i'm going to do Control v and then from here i'm going to go ahead and hide that for a bit we're going to go to layers and of course we're going to go to gradient map and from here, I'm going to go ahead and select uh, the same gradient that we've been using throughout this tutorial. And from here, I think that this right here is looking pretty nice. Um, one thing that we could do is we could add uh, some like exterior glow if we wanted to, uh, but I'm not really going to worry about that. We'll let like our HDR and stuff uh, take care of that. Um, and you know, if we find out that, hey, you know, this texture right here needs some actual glow, then we'll come back in and, and do that. But I don't think it does. And so from here, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and save this as, and let's just make sure that we need this mask. I'm not sure if we do, but we're going to go ahead and make sure that we have everything selected. We're going to go to save as, I'm going to go to Targa and we'll do FXT uh, Fireball 01. Uh, and we have the last one. So we'll do Fireball 02A because I don't think that we have that as a texture. And so we've got that. And let's go ahead and hit save. And then I will go ahead and see you inside of Unreal. 
And it turns out I was lying. I'm not going to be using the same gradient because what we want is we want uh, to have a different color scheme for this. And so I'm going to go to my channels. I'm going to hide my alpha channel as soon as it will let me. And we can just see here that I have a much darker color scheme. Uh, at location 100, we've got the color right here, FFED97. And then we have at location 95, F8B334. And then at location 87, we've got FD8200. And then all the way over here at location 51, we've got 6D2500. Just in case you want the gradient. And of course at zero, we have black. And I just want to mention here that we really do need to differentiate the color for this since this right here is the front of the fireball. We already have fire that's trailing along, you know, the actual uh, projectile. So we need something that's going to differentiate our colors a bit more. And so uh, changing the gradient to this is really going to help us out into the future. So I'm going to resume the tutorial here and we're going to hop into Unreal. And so uh, let's go ahead and do that. Alrighty, so I've got my texture imported into Unreal now. We're going to go ahead and work on our material. And so luckily we've already got all of our groundwork done. So we're just going to duplicate this, uh, our Fireball 01 texture. And we're going to just leave it as Fireball 02. And from here, the only thing we need to do is go to our texture and then import that like so. And then we're going to change our distortion amount to maybe 1.8 and nope, actually 0.18. There we go. So 0.18. And so now we've got some really basic distortion going on here. Uh, and we can see here, that this right here is what our texture is looking like now. It's looking quite nice. And that's all we need to do. We don't need to change any texture coordinate indexes. Um, and we're just going to leave all the other stuff uh, default as it were in our previous fireball. And so from here, let's go ahead and hop on into our fireball projectile. So we can see that we have this right here going on right about now. And so from here, let's go ahead and new particle emitter. And I'm going to go over here to FXM fireball 02. And I'm going to go ahead and just drag up. Oh, actually, I'm going to drag over my dynamic parameter from the first fireball. I'm also going to drag over the first color over life. And then I'm going to delete my old color over life. And now let's go ahead and single out this fireball emitter. Let's turn off our motion since we don't want to see that right this second. And now we have, see that we have something that looks like this. Let's go ahead and bring in some initial rotation. Then we want to do a uh, rotation rate as well. So this right here is going to be a static fireball. Essentially, it's going to be local space. We'll do negative uh, 0.2 and maybe 0.2 as our rotation amounts. And then from here for our lifetime, we're going to do maybe 0.2 and 0.3. So we have something that looks kind of like this. Actually, we'll do maybe 0.4 on some of them. And we're going to increase our spawn rate to 50, which brings us up to about 15 particles. We're going to change our velocity to 5, 5, 5 in each axis. We'll do negative 5, negative 5, and negative 5, just like so. And then what we want to do is over here on our dynamic parameter, we just want to ensure that this right here is going from 0 to 1. And on our dissolve portion, what we want to do is we want to add a third point. And over here, we're going to make this right here be about maybe 0.3 uh, to completely, uh, what would we call it? And actually, we're going to go, uh, sorry, on point, on the very first point, we want it to be completely dissolved. And then at 0.3, we want it to undissolve itself. And then on the very last point, we want it to dissolve again. This right here is going to help us uh, with our alpha and help stop some of the popping that we're getting with this particular texture. And just due to what we're doing here, we don't want it to pop too bad. And so looking at it, we've got that. Let's go ahead and hop into our size by life. We're going to change this to about 2. And actually we'll do maybe 1.8. And then we'll go all the way up to maybe 2.4. Let's see here. 2.4 in size and then uh, from here uh, I think that right there is fine enough and so we've got that 
And now what we're wanting to do is we want to ensure that this right here is in local space, which now it is. We're going to check our lifetime again. We want our initial size to be uh, between, say, 18 and 25. That way we have a little bit more randomization within this. And so now that we have that, we want to go to our color over life. And I'm going to just change, uh, let's see, uh, this right here to maybe 0 0.5, 0 0.5, so one and then 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Actually, maybe we'll do 0 0.8, 0 0.8. And then at the end over here, we'll do 0 0.2, 0 0.2, so one, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. And so now we have some, uh, some definite darker colors than our other particles. So we can see this over here. Let's go ahead and move this over to the left, which I believe makes it show up first. Uh, don't quote me on that. <laughs> but we, we just want to make sure that it shows up uh, in the best direction, which, yeah, I'm thinking that this right here is showing up first. Either way, and I was just using the arrow keys to reshuffle. And so now that we've got a couple of emitters, I'm going to call this uh, main fireball. And then I'm going to call this emitter right here our trailing fire. And then we'll call this uh, fire trail. Alrighty. And so now if we preview this, uh, we can go ahead and see that we have a nice little fireball at the beginning. And then of course we got our trailing fire and then we have our actual particle ribbon. So this right here is uh, giving us a pretty nice result and we have a very defined uh, projectile portion, so the actual orange ball over here. It might be a little bit on the orange side. Uh, we could probably tweak that in a little bit or later uh, once we get the rest of the effect honed in. But for now, it's good to have some differentiation. And so we've got some nice trailing fire. Uh, and I think this right here is looking pretty good. I think that our ribbon uh, might have a little bit too much velocity on it. And so we're going to go in and we're going to fix that real quick. And so we're going to go over here to our uh, initial velocity for our ribbon. And we're going to do 25, 25, 25, negative 25, negative 25, and negative 25. And let's see how this looks once again. And so we've got this. And I think that that right there is certainly looking a lot better. And so uh, from here, um, we're going to go ahead and work on the sparks uh, and then the smoke. And what we might do also to kind of add in uh, a little bit more uh, depth to this effect is perhaps we do want to add a glow to the beginning of this fireball. And so let's go ahead and hop into making a glow material and then we'll start working on sparks and that kind of thing. So I went ahead and made myself a glow material right here. If all I've done is just name it. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring in a texture sample. I'm not going to have anything in that right this second. Oh, and then I'm going to bring in a particle color. And two multiplies. And we're just going to do the thing that you always do with particles. And, and actually, I'm going to bring in this color right there as my opacity since we're going to have a grayscale texture. And right now, it's going to throw off an error because we don't have uh, anything under our texture sample. And that's OK. So let me go ahead and save that. Now we're going to hop on over to Photoshop, which, where is it? Come on. Photoshop, Photoshop, Photoshop. So now that we're within Photoshop, we're going to go ahead and create a 256 by 256 texture. We're going to grab our brush. And we're going to use this default brush that we've been using throughout this tutorial and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to select the highest color that I can and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do control R to bring in my rulers I'm going to snap these rulers to the center so I'm just clicking the ruler and dragging down and then I'm going to try and find what I think is the center and so I'm going to make this right here quite small let's say something like this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a little bit bigger and I'm going to click again and let's make it a little bit smaller. So there we go. So something like that. And then what we can do is come back into the center again and just kind of 
click a couple times to get us a really bright gradient. We can see that we've got some uh, little things happening right there. So it's kind of a hard edge. So maybe we can go in here and we can go blur and blur a little bit, kind of remove the edge. But what we want is we want a really bright core. And so then we've got a nice uh, feathered edge. So let's go ahead and file and save as. We'll go to textures and it doesn't seem like I have a glow folder. So I'll say glow. And then uh, I'll call this FXT glow 01A. And then uh, I'll save this just as a PNG. Okay. And now let's go over to Unreal. We're gonna go to our content browser, textures, new folder, glow. We're gonna import our newest texture here. So we've got our glow. Let's import this sucker. Let's go ahead and save all just to make sure that I've got everything saved. And now I'm gonna go over to my glow once again, and I'm going to uh, just type in FXT glow, find that glow, bring that in. And from here, we've got that. And now we're gonna go ahead and hop into our particle. So over here, I'm gonna create a new particle emitter. And I'm gonna call this, um, let's just call it Sparks. And we're gonna change our color of life to something um, a little bit different. And actually, we do want to do HDR over here. And so uh, we're gonna derive this just like so, like we've done. And then of course, uh, perhaps what we could do is bring in a, uh, just in this case, we'll make sure that glows are the same. So we'll just do HDR intensity, like so. And we'll do a default value of maybe three and we will plug that in just like so. And so there we go. And now we've got a nice intense little glow right there. And perhaps, uh, okay, so we got that. And now what we wanna do is let's go to our fireball particle again. And now we've got some nice glow going on. And we're gonna change this to maybe 0 0.2, 0 0.1, or 0 0.01, let's say 0 0.01. And then we'll do uh, 0 0.01 and zero. So something kind of like that, maybe 0 0.1, 0 0.2, just to kind of get a feel for these colors here. I think that right there is pretty nice uh, so far. Then we want to do initial size and we're going to do maybe a 10 and then about five as our minimum. And then what we want is we want to do size and size by life. And we want it to fade out to zero for our embers. And then maybe we want to make our size by life maybe two, something like that, and then fade out to zero. And uh, from here, we want our initial velocity to be maybe 25, 25, 25. And we're going to do negative 25 in each axis. And so let's see here, negative 25. So something like that. And then... Uh, we want to go ahead and make this type data GPU sprites and we want to spawn maybe a hundred of them And now let's go ahead and come over here and press play Now we can see that we've got some nice uh, Sparks coming out one thing that we do want to do is we want to make a radius that these things spawn out of And so we're going to go ahead in here. And we're going to do location and we're going to bring in a sphere and I think that's a little bit too big. So maybe we'll do 25. So something like so. And maybe we'll actually do 15. And uh, what we can do is we can do a little bit of velocity here. And we can come over here to velocity scale. And we'll do something like two. And then we can come over here and we can add in a little bit of drag to these. So something like so. And then uh, I think that, that right there will probably look good. So we'll just see how, how it looks. So we've got some nice sparkles going on. And now what we can do is we can adjust our lifetime. So we'll do maybe 0.2 and then all the way to maybe 1.5. That way we have some nice uh, sparkles that are left over. And then one thing is we want to come over here and do our color over life. And uh, which we can do this one of two ways. We can either make a sine wave inside of our material or we can go with a colored amount. And so 
Uh, I think that just because this glow is going to be used for some other things, perhaps we just want to do this through color. So I'm going to bring over this color over life uh, curve by clicking on it. And I'm going to do remove curve for color over life. And then I'm going to fit this horizontally and vertically. And I'm going to press control and drag this down. And then I'm going to press control again. And I'm going to drag that up and press control again, drag that down, press control again, drag that up. And so now we've got some flickering that's going on over here. And I think that over there is looking pretty nice. Let me go ahead and select this and um, I'm going to click auto so that we've got a nice curve that's going on. And so uh, from here, one thing that we can do is we can add in some extra curves to give me some flat spots. Um, and this right here, it's just so that they kind of like completely fade out and then um, go back up to a brighter color. So we want to do auto and then I'll do auto over here as well. Actually, no, we, we want linear since we don't want it to go into negative values. And so we've got that. And then we've got some nice little sparkles going on. I think that perhaps our size by life is a little bit too big. So we'll do 1.5. And so now we have something that's looking like that. We're putting out about 144 particles uh, roughly. And our spawn rate is 100. So that's fine. And uh, we're going to see how this right here looks. And so we've got some nice uh, little sparkles. I think that we could put out a little bit more in this case. So we'll say maybe 250 as our spark count. And we'll come over here. And we'll throw in those. And so I think that right there is looking pretty nice. And so now we've got us some nice sparkles that are going in. Um, I think that their radius could be a little bit larger on the spawn size. And so we're going to hop back in. And this right here is just one of those things where, you know, we're coming in and we're tweaking. And, okay, now I think that right there is looking pretty sweet. And so we've got that. And, um... Perhaps we want the sparks to be a little bit more red at the beginning, right, to kind of match our fireball. And so we'll do maybe zero, and then we'll fade them off into orange. And so now we've got something like that. And I think those are a bit too red. And so once again, we're going to come over here. And it's not going because I have it playing in the, in the background. 0 0.05 perhaps. And so now we're going to come over here again and take a look at it. I think that something like that is quite nice and so we've got that and now let's go ahead and add a glow to the actual uh, core fireball that we have and so let's just duplicate this main fireball so we'll duplicate emitter we'll call this um main glow and we can go ahead and delete this dynamic parameter because we don't need it and i'm gonna go ahead and turn that off and now let's go ahead and just uh show only our main glows that we're going to be doing over here. So I'll say FXM uh, and I'll find my glow material. And then I want to, uh, I'll just drag in my color over life. Actually, you know what? I will drag in my color over life from here. And it's looking like we got that. And so, and actually it doesn't matter because I had duplicated it. So I didn't need to do that. So I'll do maybe zero, something like that. And, um, what we can do is we can say uh, maybe two, five, something like that. We'll make this 0 0.1, 0 0.15. It's just going to flicker a lot. And then we want to fix this color of life. And so make it a bit more orange, maybe 0 0.8, 0 0.5. And so let's go over here and maybe I'll do two. No, because our HDR is going to blow that out. So we'll just do 0 0.2 and zero. Maybe 0.3. Okay, that's looking a little bit better. We're going to come in over here on our size by life. And we're going to do maybe 5. Let's see, 10. So something like so. We're going to boost our spawn rate. So maybe uh, 10 like that. And we're going to come to our color over life. And uh, we're going to expand all. And I'm going to make sure that maybe we're starting only at like 0.2. Something like so. And then our initial size. Uh, this right here is fine for now and uh, let's go ahead and see how this right here is looking and so okay we can definitely tell that we've got a bit of a glow i definitely think that we need a larger glow so we're going to boost this size by life to maybe 20 something like so and our initial size and so let's go to size by life 
and we'll do from zero. Um, and so we've got that and uh, we might not want it to pulse so much, but we'll see how it looks. And if we don't want it to pulse, then we'll just let the lifetime live a little bit longer. So we've got this and let's go ahead over here. And so we've got that. One thing I think that the glow is too strong and I don't like the pulse on it. And so let me uh, stop that. And then what we'll do is we'll just make a lifetime of maybe 0.5. So something like that. And now we've got some nice glows and it's looking like if we single this out, we've only got five particles, that's not bad. And so then I also wanna make our color over live alpha, maybe 0 0.5 uh, so that it's not as bright. And then we're gonna come over here and uh, actually did I do the wrong one? So let's see, 0 0.5 main glow. Okay, and let me single out my fireball. It's looking like, um, yeah, so we'll see here. We've got our main glow. And then we've got everything else. And so I'm gonna change my color of life again. So we point zero one. So something like that. So we have much less of a glow. And let's go ahead and hit play again. And I think that right there is looking pretty nice. We've got us a nice little glow. Uh, one thing is that our glow does last a bit long over here uh, whenever it hits. And so, I mean, we can come back over and change this to maybe 0 0.1, 0 0.15, let's see. 0 0.15, 0 0.15 for our main glow. And then um, what we want to do is maybe uh, leave our, or boost our spawn rate up by five since we decreased it by five. That'll give us about five particles. And now we have uh, something that kind of fades out as soon as the uh, particle system dies, which is what we're looking for here, I think. And so, uh, you know, depending on what you're looking for, this glow could be a little bit too big and so, you know, I'll come back one last time here and I'll maybe set a line 15 for my main glow and we'll check out how that looks. Oh, let's go. And okay, I think that, that right there is quite nice. And so we've got us a nice fireball. And so let's go ahead and uh, we'll go over here and we'll do a slow-mo just so that we can see what's going on. The slow-mo 0.2. So now we can see that we've got a fireball in the center We've got some nice sparks that are following it. And uh, I think that there is looking pretty good. Uh, one thing that I do want to add uh, to our um, main sparks right here is perhaps we want to uh, do maybe some velocity aligned stuff. So we want to go velocity to our sparkles and then uh, size by life. We want to uh, just leave this right here as is. And then from here, our size by life, we want to do 0.5 like so. And then I think that right there is fine. And let's go ahead over here to our sparkles. And now we've got something that looks like this and it's a bit more uh, sparky instead of uh, lots of little dots that are floating around. So I think that right there looks pretty nice. Uh, perhaps we could expand uh, the initial size a bit. So maybe out to 15, so something like that. And so now that we have that, let's go ahead and check it out, see how it looks. And so we've got uh, some nice little sparks that come out of it. I think that, that is looking pretty good. Um, and so, uh, and perhaps what we could do again is now that we've got some of those sparks, we will duplicate this emitter. Uh, we'll do a spawn and we'll do say maybe 50. And what we'll do is we'll make our initial size 10 and we'll lock our axes and then of course come to square, which we don't need to lock our axis if we go like that. And our size by life, we'll do 1.5 and just kind of reverse that. And now if we view this, uh, we can see that we have half sparks, half little circles. And so now we have some pretty good uh, variation, I think. So that right there is looking quite fine. Uh, I guess one last part that I'll add is I'll come over here with this sphere and I'll make this maybe uh, 10 for our main sparks. And so we've got that. And um, I think that that right there is pretty good from there. We'll test it again and see. And so now we've got that. And 
Uh, I think that right there is looking pretty good. We've got some nice sparks that come out in the center. We've got some bigger stuff that comes out on the edges. We've got some nice fireball motion. Um, and I think that it's looking pretty good. The last thing that we're really missing here is just some smoke. So we're gonna hop into Photoshop and create our last texture for this tutorial. And um, at least for the projectile portion, we will have impacts and cast particles in a future series soon. But let's go ahead and hop in and create our uh, actual smoke texture. So now that we are in Photoshop, we're gonna start creating our smoke. I've got a 512 by 512 texture here. And uh, for this, I'm gonna be using a, an external brush set. This is called Blur's Good Brush Set. And I believe this is 7.0. So Blur's Good Brush Set 7.0. Um, it might be hard to find. If you guys can't find it, let me know and I will upload it somewhere and then um, you can download it. But in any case, uh, they have some nice smoke brushes in here. So I'm gonna use this one that looks kinda like this. And I'm gonna go ahead to my brush settings and I'm just gonna leave kinda everything how it is. Maybe I'll add in some uh, extra scatter. And then from here, I'm just gonna grab my brush and uh, I'm gonna start painting some nice things. And so we just want some decent uh, smoke over here. And so maybe we'll have something like that. But that there is quite noisy. And so let me go back. And in this case, maybe I'll just use my mouse and just kind of add in some clicks uh, every now and then. So we've got something like that. And let me fill that in again. And there we go. Now I've got some bigger uh, chunks. We got something like this. And I think that right there is uh, probably good enough for our smoke texture that we need. It doesn't need to be too detailed. We just wanna see how it's gonna fade out. It's just gonna fade out something like this. And so, which out of curiosity, I do wanna see what it'll look like if I run minimum past it. And so uh, we could have a little bit something like that, help us get some cooler uh, fade in there and so now we have it a little bit cooler there we go I think that's pretty nice let's bring this over and make sure that it's mapped from 0 to 255 so I think this right here is good enough uh, it's kind of smoky kind of wispy um, and so we'll go over here and we'll go to save as I'll go to textures smoke and uh, I've already got a couple of smoke textures but I'll just say uh, FXT smoke O2 PNG and so I'll go there and now let's go ahead and hop into Unreal and over here we've got it so that uh, I need to create a new folder and so I'll say smoke oh, let's rename that smoke and uh, from here let's create a new material I'll call this FXM smoke 01A and uh, let's go ahead and we will import Actually, this right here needs to be inside of a smoke folder in materials. Smoke. So I'll go to my textures, move that over to smoke, and now let's import our actual smoke texture. And so let's see here, smoke, and smoke02. And now let's go ahead and save everything. Save, go to smoke, there we go. And now we can bring in our texture sample. I'll say F XT smoke bring that over and um, bring in particle color two multiplies and plug in just as we would expect it to work so something like this and there we go and we just need base color we're gonna do uh, translucent we are gonna use default lit here and then uh, we will do volumetric directional. And that right there is all we need in this case. So we've got our smoke. And actually, I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know why I say all we need because we do want to dissolve this. And so what we want to do is we want to um, not bring on that. We want to do subtract. And then uh, we want to plug that in right there into opacity. We want to bring in a uh, dynamic parameter. And we want to just plug this in here and we'll call this dissolve like so 
So we will save that and uh, we'll make that like that. And so now what we can do is we can go on over to our fireball projectile. And uh, what I'm going to do is create a new emitter. I'll call this smoke. And from here, uh, we will go ahead and it's already got my smoke texture in here, which is fine. Let's we'll single this out. And um, so we've got that. And now, uh, perhaps what I want to do is change my background color to a gray. And we want to bring in a dynamic parameter and we want to refresh it. And now we want to make this right here a constant curve. We want to say expand all. We're going to add three points. I'm going to expand all again. And so on our first point, we're going to have zero as our dissolve. Maybe at point four, we'll have zero as well. And then at one, we want to go into full dissolve mode, like so. And now it's dissolving out. We also want to go into initial rotation. We want to add that. We want to do rotation rate. And I will do uh, negative 0.2 and 0.2 as our rotation rate. Maybe we want to do 0.3 and negative 0.3, make it a little bit faster. We want our lifetime to be between 1 and maybe 1.5. So it's going to live a little bit. We want to go into our size and size by life. We want to change this to maybe uh, 0.5 to uh, maybe 5, something like that. We also want to increase our spawn rate to about 50. We want to change our color over life, which for some reason it is completely black right this second. And so I've got that right there plugged in. Okay, emissive default lit. I'm guessing that it is completely black because I have it set to default lit. So let's just go ahead and test this real quick. Okay, so we can see that we do have uh, white smoke in here, which is what we're wanting. So let's bring this projectile back over. And uh, is there a way to view lights? I don't think that there is a way. Let's see, detail mode, uh, view modes, unlit. Okay, so yeah, so we're gonna view it unlit. And then uh, from here, let's go ahead and um, increase our initial size. And so we'll maybe say, uh, 40 and 40 and so now we've got something that looks like that and From here we want to change our initial velocity to about 10 and negative 10 So we have so, something that looks like this and then uh, perhaps for sort mode we want to do oldest first And so now we've got that and now we can actually see that anything that is on the right side is in view first So now we figure that out and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring over our main fireball. I'm going to bring that all the way over to the right so that we see that first. And now instead of our smoke, we're going to go to color over life. We're going to do maybe one and 0.2 and zero. And then we're going to go here and we're going to do 0.2 all the way down. And so now it's going to fade off and we want it to be uh, 0.2 at about five. And then we're going to go over here and we're going to add one last emitter. I'm going to call this light. And we're going to check this right here until it shows up as a light bulb. And one thing I want to do now is uh, I'm going to find our particle in the content browser. I'm going to bring this over. Now we can see that our smoke is quite large. Um, that's okay for now. Um, and now I'm just going to show this. And we're going to come in here and what we're going to do is, let's see if I can split screen it. Uh, we're going to edit this light right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say light. We're going to bring on a light, which I don't know if you need to bring on the light for this, but we'll see. Um, and so let's go ahead and expand all. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this right here closer to the ground. Something like so. I'm going to make our color over life maybe 10 and 2 and... Uh, maybe 0.5, so something like that. And then uh, we're going to go into our light module. We're going to make our radius maybe say 50 or 100. And then we're going to make our exponent say 500. Well, let's go back to 16. And we're just going to see what works. So our brightness, we'll do say 5,000. Okay, so 500. Um, 
And maybe we want to do, let's see what a thousand looks like. So we've got a thousand now as our radius and we've got 500 as our brightness. I think that right there looks pretty good. And so now we don't need to spawn so many of these. So I believe if we just spawn say uh, five or something like that, we've got that. And let's bring our brightness up to maybe 1500. And so we've got something that looks like this. It's kind of flickering. Maybe we want our radius to be 1500. And so we've got that. And um, then we've got our smoke. And so it's interesting because it's so large. And so one thing that we can do is we can come over here to our smoke and we'll say that maybe it's fading out uh, pretty quickly. So we'll go into our size by life. We'll make this right here um, maybe 0.7 and then we'll add another point, expand all again. Then we'll go to one and we'll say zero. So now our smoke is gonna fade down to zero. Uh, a lot quicker. So we've got that and then we can see that it kind of fades out and perhaps what this is showing me is that we could do it even sooner. And so we've got this and we're going to go back into our size by life and we're going to make this say 0.4 perhaps. Nope. Now we can see it visually. So 0.5 something like so and we will um, see how that looks. And so there we go. Now we can see that it's kind of fading out at the right time but that's a little bit too soon again so I'll do maybe 0.75 and so um, we've got that let's go ahead and delete this and now let's press play and see how our fireball is looking so I think that our smoke could last a bit longer but we have some nice sparks and everything and so let's go here again and we'll change our lifetime to maybe two like so, and let's change our color over life. All right, now it's going from one zero, and let's maybe change this to two so that it is a bit thicker. And one thing is I want it to be behind this main trail. And so we'll go over here and we'll say smoke, and I'm gonna bring this all the way over to the very last thing that we'll render. And uh, we'll see here, so we've got that. And now it looks kind of like this, which isn't bad. I think that the smoke is a bit thick now. So we're going to go back over into our fireball projectile again. And we're going to do color over life. And maybe I'll just do uh, 1.25 as our initial color over life. And I do want this to be even a bit bigger. So we'll do maybe to 8. So something like that. And let's go ahead and test this. And so now we've got something that looks like this. And I think that right there is a nice little fireball that we've got. I think that's a pretty good projectile. Um, one thing that I do want to see is we can turn off uh, this main glow where that's at. So we'll see how that looks. Because uh, I don't know if I'm feeling it too much. So we've got something like that. And yeah, you know, I do think that the main glow really does help it out a lot. But I'm going to go to this color of life and I'm going to make it even less of 0 0.005 for her main glow. And uh, let's see if that even shows up. So it does a little bit. And so I think that's better. And so now we've got uh, some nice projectiles. Of course, you know, you could play with the smoke to, you know, make it a little bit better. If you wanted to uh, of course we don't have to spawn the smoke as quickly you know we could make it fade in over time so that maybe as the fire dissolves uh, it works out a little bit better so maybe we'll do that just real quick to see how it'll look so we'll go over here to our smoke and we'll do color over life and I'm gonna add three points and I'm gonna expand all and so I'm gonna add 1.25 at maybe point three at zero is going to be zero and then at one is going to be zero so now it'll take a little bit longer to fade in and uh, now we've got something that looks like this and now I think that, that is a lot better in my personal opinion and also we can see that we've got uh, some actual glow going across the ground which is nice and perhaps we could brighten that up a bit I mean we really this is a visual effect we want to show that this thing it's pretty bright, and so maybe we'll do 5,000. It's probably going to be way too much. 
we'll do 5,000 for now. And so I think that there is, is pretty good. And so um, I think that we will add one last portion to this. And you know what? I do want to, sorry, I, I keep going back and forth, but hopefully you can uh, bear with me here. I've done a lot to this. So I don't particularly want to redo the tutorial. <laughs> and so I'm going to go into my color of life and I'm going to make this after all, maybe 0.8. And so that way it isn't as bright. And so uh, from here, there's only really one thing left to do. And that's the actual projectile motion itself. We did build out the blueprint and um, essentially uh, I want to show you what we'll kind of do here. And so we can see that it certainly looks good in motion like this, but what if we could add in these offsets to the actual projectile? So even if the target isn't moving, uh, we have some pretty nice looking stuff uh, and that they arc out instead of just coming out straight. And so in part three, that is gonna be the last portion of this uh, fireball tutorial. And then we'll have another series probably that um, details the actual impacts and the cast particles. Uh, so from here, I'm gonna go ahead and end this tutorial, uh, take a good look at what we have created so far, and um, you know, get out there, practice, go ahead and make this thing a reality, and show me what you've created. And from here, I will leave it to part three to add in some next uh, secondary motion to this. So I'll go ahead and stop this now. Go watch part three, leave a like, comment, all that stuff. And uh, we'll see you in part three.